but both of the angles are double angles, then you solve as you normally would and then divide it by 2 at the end. But the problem with this one is we can't solve for both of these. We need to somehow get this together as, um, we need to somehow get these as one trigonometric function or, or um, one using trigonometric function. So I look at my double angle formulas. I see cosine of 2x. I notice that there's three double angle formulas. Last class period, I told you, basically we're always going to want to use cosine squared minus sine squared, unless it comes into solving or an identity. Well, in this case, it would make kind of more sense to have everything in terms of sines or cosines. Wouldn't you guys agree as far as solving? That'd make things usually easier. So I do see that this can be rewritten as 1 minus 2 sine squared of, of x. So I can rewrite cosine as 1 minus sine squared of x plus sine of x equals 0. That is my double angle formula. So now I see, I can say, oh, well, let's go ahead and rewrite this. Was that a 2 sine of cosine of x? 2, sorry. Yeah, I did my best. OK, yes? Now, let's kind of write this in quadratic-ish form. And then if you guys remember what I explained, when I'm factoring, I don't ever want to factor with a negative in front. I always like getting that negative out. So I'm just going to basically divide everything by negative 1. So therefore, I have 2 sine squared of x minus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. OK. Now, this probably looks pretty difficult to do. So what I would recommend doing is what I showed in class is rewriting this in terms of x's. Now, this is something that we have been doing since Algebra 1, right? You're just factoring a trinomial to solve. So you got to factor trinomials. We're writing them as a product of your factors. Okay, So basically we're saying, what two numbers multiply to give you 2x squared? Well, that's 2x and x. And then what two numbers multiply to give you negative 1? Guys, there's only one solution, negative 1 and 1, right? So one of them has to be negative 1, one of them has to be positive 1. Since they're adding up to give me a negative, I want my larger product to be negative and my uh, lower product to be positive. Now, yes? How would you rewrite this in terms of It was always equal to 0. No, no, no. Divided by a negative one. I wanted to get rid of. Why would it go one in front of the negative one instead of x? So that you could factor into both sides and divide by negative one. No, I, that one, that one just went there. So all I'm doing is dividing by negative one to flip the sign, to get rid of this negative. Got it. Okay. Now, here I can now just replace this for two sine of x plus one times sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now this is just like the quick response, right? Now all I simply need to do is just solve by applying my 0 product property. 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0, sine of x minus 1 equals 0, sine of x equals negative 1 half, sine of x equals 1. So I go to my unit circle. And I say, all right, when is sine equal to negative 1 half? Well, it's equal to 1 half at pi over 6, right? Yes? So therefore, it's going to be equal to negative at those two points, where it's at where the reference angle is still pi over 6. Those are all equivalent. So what are these two angles then? Between 0, I'm sorry, I should have added that. Your problem says between 0 and 2 pi. So what are those two angles? Well, halfway around the circle is pi. Add an extra pi over 6, and you're at 7 pi over 6. All the way around the circle is 2 pi, or 12 pi over 6. Subtract a pi over 6, you're at 11 pi over 6. And then sine is equal to 1 at this point right here. What is that angle? Pi halves. So therefore, you can just write them as a solution set. 